Have you ever cut a dado groove with a router? You get everything set up just right, mark your line, set up a cutting guide, you're all ready to go. Then this happens. This of course is just an exaggerated version of what can happen, but if you've ever used a router before, you know it doesn't take much to get off track and get a really ugly cut. Well today, we're going to put a stop to this nonsense forever. And you don't need a fancy expensive store-bought jig or some complicated DIY router track guide system. All you need is this, a couple pieces of MDF or plywood, and I'll show you how to do it. Welcome to DIY The Art of Wood. I'm Jeremy. The first thing you'll need is a piece of scrap wood. Here I'm using 3 quarter inch MDF, which works great because it's cheap, stable, and machines easily. But you can use whatever you have available. Some scrap plywood will do just fine. Just make sure you have nice straight edges and square corners. Next, measure the diameter of the base of your router and mark a line on the MDF that is just a snoitch longer so we can sneak up on the perfect fit later. Then hop over to the miter saw to cut two pieces that are approximately the same length, but both need to be longer than your marked line. Then set up a stop block so you can cut both pieces at the same time to that line you measured and marked in the last step. Reminder that that line needs to be just a snoitch longer than the diameter of your router. Now it's time to lay out the line for the dado. Measure and mark the center line for the dado and lay down some painter's tape over that line. This step isn't completely necessary, but it can help prevent tear out on wood and chip out on hard surfaces like this melamine top. Next, measure and mark for an offset line for the cutting guide. This offset line is half the diameter of the base of your router. Next, set up a straight edge cutting guide on the offset line you just marked. Here I'm using an aluminum cutting guide from Empire. They make measuring and marking tools, squares, levels, that sort of thing. Check the description below for a link to this cutting guide. But if you don't have one of these, you don't need to go out and buy a cutting guide for this to work though. You can use anything that has a nice straight edge and is rigid enough to resist flexing. A level will work, a piece of plywood or MDF that is long enough, or even some aluminum square tubing. Interesting thing though about that is these cutting guides were about the same price or less than aluminum tubing at Home Depot and they are a bit more versatile since you can use a single section or connect the two together to make a longer cutting guide. So I just bought these instead. To ensure your line is straight and square to the table edge, you can clamp a pair of speed squares to the table to act as stops to square up the cutting guide. Next, grab the MDF blocks you just cut to act as spacers to set up a second cutting guide on the other side of the center line of your cut. Then clamp everything down, making sure everything is still square. Remove the spacers and check the fit with your router. Here you can see I'm a bit wide on the spacing. There shouldn't be any side to side play on the router. But that's okay, we did this on purpose so we could sneak up on that perfect fit. Bring your blocks back over to the miter saw and set up the stop block again to just shave a little bit off. Use the blocks again to set up the second cutting guide, repeating these last two steps as many times as necessary to get that perfect fit. What you're looking for is for the router to have no side to side play in between the two cutting guides, but still be able to move freely. Once you get that perfect fit, bring your blocks back to the miter saw for one final cut. Rotate the blocks 90 degrees and cut the other side. As long as you didn't move your stop block from the last cut, you'll end up with two perfectly square spacer blocks with equal dimensions on all four sides. That way it won't make a difference which way you orient these blocks to set up the cutting guides. Spin them, flip them, it doesn't matter. Now these next two steps aren't necessary, but to prevent losing these or having them end up back at the scrap pile, grab a sharpie and label them. Then store them with your jigs or your router or anywhere you won't lose them. You can also slap a finish on them to help keep them in good shape. Here I'm using shellac, well, because I had an almost empty can laying around and decided to just use that up. But this isn't totally necessary because if these do get beat up or if they do end up in the scrap pile, you can always just make another set. So let's give these a try. One tip when you are using any cutting guide like this, always support the guide in the middle with a cross support like I'm using here. This will prevent the cutting guide from flexing in the middle and keep those lines nice and straight. To set up a cross support, grab anything that is long enough to be clamped down, bring it up to the edge of the cutting guide so it just barely kisses the cutting guide. 
You don't want to go any further than that because you can flex the cutting guide inward, which will then narrow that space and cause the router to jam up. And then just clamp the cross support in place. And be sure to do this on both sides. When I cut melamine, I usually set the depth of the router bit to just cut through the melamine on the first pass, since it is a pretty hard material. That can make things a bit easier on your router. My opinion is then, once you're through the veneer, in this case the melamine, the tape has done its job and can be removed. The router seems to slide a bit easier without the tape in the way. After each cut, vacuum out any sawdust that has accumulated along the cutting guide so the router can still slide easily. Then just repeat the cut, lowering your router bit a little with each pass until you get to the depth you need. And you'll get perfectly straight dados every time.